our expert today is the Honorable Kristen Shotwell, who is a judge with King County District Court. And Judge Shotwell is going to tell us all about Small Claims Court. Good morning, Judge Shotwell. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks you for taking the time to talk with us here. So you have a, a t discussion you want to call right court, right claim. And I so, do. yeah, what is the purpose of small claims court? Well, small claims court is very unique. It is um, the purpose of the small claims court is for the just, informal and speedy resolution of simple claims. Now, the small claims court is unique because it does not involve complicated procedural rules or discovery rules or even attorneys like most civil uh, lawsuits do. So it's just citizens coming to court, um, resolving their dispute through mediation or a small claims trial. Okay. And what types of claims are allowed in a small court, uh, small claims court? I'm glad you asked that because not every type of case can be brought in the small claims court. The small claims court is a special creature of statute and there are some limitations on the types of cases we can hear in small claims. One of those limitations is that the small claims court is for the recovery of money only. So a really good example and a common type of claim in small claims is a lawsuit to recover money that you loaned someone, but they never paid you back. Another really common example is a suit in small claims to recover money for reimbursement for damage to your vehicle. Say someone backs into your car and damages your bumper and you have to replace the bumper and you want them to pay for that. That's a very um, appropriate and common sort of small claim. Okay. And what types of claims may not be brought in small claims court? A lot. A lot, <laughs> a lot of claims may not be brought. Um, and it's really important for people to understand that because if you do bring a claim in small claims that the court has no power to hear, subject matter jurisdiction. If the court has no power to hear your claim, it will be dismissed. And you will have to start all over in the right courts. And you may be uh, not able to do that because of the statute of limitations, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But um, a really common example of claims that cannot be heard in small claims court or even in King County District Court are suits against the state of Washington or any department of the state of Washington. So if someone is suing the Department of Licensing, for example, they cannot bring that claim in small claims court or even in district court because all suits against the state of Washington or any of their departments have to, to go to superior court. So that's a pretty common example. Um, Another really common example of claims that are brought in small claims court that, that we have no power to hear are suits uh, for different types of defamation, which is libel or slander. And those suits also have to be brought in superior court. Um, so those are the kind of the common ones that I see that people um, have filed improperly in the small claims Court, which will result in a dismissal because the court has no power to hear those claims. Okay. And so you said that I can only recover money. So how much can people sue to recover in small claims court? Well, that's a very good question too. So the uh, limited limitation for damages in, and by damages, we mean the money you seek to recover mm -hmm. is limited to $10,000 only if you're an individual, meaning you're not a corporate entity. So if you're a company or an LLC or any kind of corporate structure uh, entity, you, you uh, are limited to $5,000 in small claims court. Okay, but if, if, what if they want, to, the, the damage was more than $10,000, they can simply reduce the amount they asked for and that would be acceptable in small claims? They can. So if you feel that you're owed $12,000, but you don't want to hire an attorney and you don't want to go through a complicated civil lawsuit with all the procedural rules, you can reduce what you're asking for to $10,000. You might at trial say, come and prove your damages in the amount of $12,000, but the judge may only award 
you up to ten thousand dollars if you're a person, mm -hmm. and up to five thousand dollars if you're a corporate entity, um, okay. a corporation. Well, and speaking of attorneys, when should I talk with an attorney? Well, some people who have a claim, any kind of claim uh, in, in the civil, civil legal system should talk to an attorney, even if they're intending on, on filing that in small claims court. Um, it's, it's always best to get a consultation if, if you can. Judges and clerks cannot give legal advice, and that might help avoid some of the unpleasant surprises in small claims court when people, for example, appear in court with their suit against the state of Washington and I have to dismiss it for no jurisdiction. So that's um, some heartache and trouble that could be avoided by talking to an attorney. Um, but in, in particular, attorney an attorney can help you decide whether or not small claims for the district court is the proper place to file your suit. They can help you decide which defendant to sue based on who owes you the money or what your theory of liability is. Um, they can help you decide whether or not how much, you know, how much time you have left to sue somebody because you can't sue somebody indefinitely. There are limitations, and we talked about this earlier, there are limitations on the amount of time you can bring a claim against somebody. Mm -hmm. that's and that's a statute of limitations. Yeah, statute of limitations. Okay, that's what that's all about. So how do people know if they are suing the right person? Well, um, that's a really good question. We just spoke of uh, they can ask an attorney if, if they're suing the proper person. Um, they may find out in the most unpleasant way when their case goes to trial and the judge says, this person isn't liable to you. you this person doesn't owe you the money or you don't have the right legal theory to recover. So um, it's much better to do a little bit of homework up front uh, to find out if you're suing the right person. Okay. So can you give me an example of a common improper claim? I sure can. I just had this one arise recently. There is a particular section in the Seattle Municipal Code that governs landlord-tenant relations. And in that particular code section, it says the claim must be brought in Seattle Municipal Court. And so what that means is in the, if you're suing some la uh, your landlord under that particular code section in the Seattle Municipal Code, you have to bring your claim in Seattle Municipal Court. And so that's something to pay attention to. Um, another example, I think on the on the municipal trend is people suing municipal departments. So they're suing um, the Seattle Housing Authority, for example, for a tort claim. And in those cases, municipal uh, departments or municipalities, so we're talking about cities and their mm -hmm. departments, people have to go through a tort claim procedure first. So they have to give the, the city or the department notice of their claim before they file it. And they have to prove that they did that when they filed their small claim. So that's, um, that's another sticking point for a lot of people. They weren't aware of it. They haven't filed uh, notice with the city of their tort claim and they can't pro provide proof to the court. And so their claim and not go forward. Uh, another really common improperly brought claim, or at least um, a claim that is going to be hard to prove in small claims court, mm -hmm. are claims for pain and suffering. Because experts uh, are not typically allowed in small claims. There's no formal discovery, like medical examinations. Um, it's going to be very hard to prove your damages for pain and suffering in small claims. And some judges say um, that's not allowed at all. Some judges say small claims, according to the statute, is for the recovery of money. And so uh, people should be careful about pain and suffering claims. Okay. So what's the bottom line on the top of topic of right claim, right court? The bottom line is it is the plaintiff's obligation. So that's the person who starts the lawsuit. It is their obligation to make sure that the small claims court has the power to hear their type of claim. 
And going back to the beginning of our discussion, the power given to the district court in the small claims department is to hear claims that are for $10,000 or less that involve the recovery of money. And so that's the really important part. You have to bring the right type of claim um, and you have to sue the right person and you have to decide whether or not you're in the right court. And that is where um, an attorney can be very, very helpful. The judges and law and clerks at the court cannot give that kind of legal advice. And it tends to be very frustrating to people because they they think, well, I have a hearing with the judge and the judge will explain it all to me. Um, and in some instances, we wouldn't be able to do that because it would constitute giving legal advice. Um, so some of this information can be very found very quickly by a simple Google search of our small claims statute. That's sort of the beginning, the nuts and bolts of the small claims law. There are cases construing it, but that's a really good place to start, which is the revised code of Washington or RCW chapter 1240. Okay. We also, yeah. if I can just add one more thing. Mm -hmm. Our, the King County District Court website has some information about the small claims department, and it also has a new guided case initiation mechanism to help people sort out some of these things when they file their claim. That's wonderful. And for our listeners' benefit, we will have links to all of the um, King County District Court small claims information that the judges just mentioned. Well, thank you very much, Judge Shotwell. Uh, well, for this information you. about small claims. I'm sure it'll be really big helpful for people who are considering bringing in action in small claims. I hope so. You know, these are really important cases and um, people need a little bit of help sorting it out before they get to court. So thanks again for having me.